Hello guys, how's it going? It's Ben here from GameReview.com and today I'm going to give you the lowdown on the Darwin Project. So the Darwin Project is a early access free to play Battle Royale game on Steam and I want you to hold off before you exit out this video because you're sick of seeing Battle Royale games. I know the market is very saturated and there are quite a lot of, uh, of those types of games on the market at the moment. However, Darwin Project I think genuinely mixes things up quite a bit and has a lot of unique mechanics compared to some of the other games that you've seen a lot of already. And I think it is actually worth genuinely taking a look at, even if you are maybe a bit tired of the Battle Royale train. So the way the Darwin Project differentiates itself from its competitors, instead of shoving, say, 50, 100, however many people it is in a ship, and sort of they all scatter over a big map, it's got a smaller map, a smaller number of players. You've only got about 10 or so players in the game. And it has a much bigger emphasis on starting out the game with nothing, gathering materials, building up your gear, building up basic gear, survival, and tracking and carefully considering your opponents and hunting them down slowly to eventually become the last person. So I want to get into the game in a second. I'm just going to show you off the equipment section of the uh, game before we go into an actual match, just to make it a bit easier. And this will become kind of a bit more apparent as the game goes on. So I'm going to jump into the equipment section. This is this is the crafting wheel that everyone's going to get. So if you hold down uh, your crafting wheel, default is Q in game. That's going to bring up all the things you can craft. If you're going to be grabbing stuff, you're going to be grabbing mainly wood and leather from around the map. So you can cut down trees and you can harvest leather from different uh, Resources, resource kind of points you gather, and these are going to allow you to craft all your gear. So you're going to start out with very little. You're going to start out with your bow, and generally no arrows, and you're going to start out with your axe. So everything else you're going to have to craft. So you've got your tool section, which is going to be one, two, and three on your hot bars. So you've got three different tools you can select. You've got your special powers, which are crafted by getting hold of electronics, which are a bit harder to get hold of. They're kind of a bit more competitive, and they're a bit kind of rarer. But if you do get one, you can get yourself some really nice gear. And you've got kind of your passive uh, equipment upgrades as well. So everyone is going to have fire because they need to warm themselves up because there's a cold environment. I'll show that off a bit later on. And everyone is going to have armor as well. So that's an option. So you can craft yourself a piece of armor. That's going to block an incoming attack. So one thing that everyone has is the arrows. So you can start with arrows. So as you can see here, I've selected hunter arrows as my option. However, if I click on here, I can change these out. So if you have default arrows, they don't have any special effects other than the damage they do. However, if you uh, choose just regular arrows, you can start with five. So normally with the special arrow types, you're going to start with zero, but the regular arrows, you're going to get start the game with five. So it's good early game sort of thing. If you can get a drop on someone quickly and they've got no arrows made yet, you can quickly take them down because they've got no way of defending themselves. Hunter arrows is what I'm currently using. So they are going to track an enemy. So if I hit them, it's going to track them for me for five seconds. It makes them easier to kind of keep pursuing them and just keep an eye on what they're doing. And I can see their health as well. So that's quite useful. Fire arrows do a bit more damage, but they uh, do travel a bit more slower. So if you want to have a bit more beef to your attacks, you can switch to fire arrows. And Berserk Arrows give you unlimited stamina for 10 seconds if you land a hit. So they're good for if you can maybe get a hit on someone out of the blue, kind of uh, get a drop on them, and then just sprint in, and they won't be able to escape. They're going to have to uh, fight. So good if you're kind of melee oriented, you can hit with the Berserk Arrow, then charge in and try and finish them off. Uh, so that's one option. So I'm just going to stick with the Hunter Arrows. So again, it's nice how many options you've got. So the tools as well. So at the moment I've got a Bear Trap. So I can craft that one wood. I can drop that down. Good for defending kind of in closed spaces. Uh, if someone tries to get the drop on you, or kind of charge you. You can clamp them with a bear trap. That's going to kind of lock them down for a bit, which is useful. If I could switch this out for various things, they all have different crafting materials. So I could craft myself a cage trap, which is a different kind of trap, which is going to uh, kind of lock them down in a kind of big uh, cage. Thing. You can see that there. I could go for a smoke bomb, which I've got my number two slot, which is quite useful. So you can drop that, and that's going to let you kind of escape from situations. Really useful in a pinch if someone gets a drop on you. Uh, trip wise, you've got various options. So I'm going to stick with a bear trap. Got myself a smoke bomb. And the glider as well, so I can craft that and glide around the map. These are your powers. So these are a bit fancier. So these have kind of a bigger effect, have long cooldowns, but they're hard to get hold of because you are required to get electronics, which, as I've said, are a bit hard to get hold of. So I can go for an energy shield. I've got a radar. I can detect um, the players around the map. With the radar, I can, I can detect resources with the detector. I can drop an arena down. That's going to lock people in a certain area to stop them running away. So no one can get in or out. That's really cool. So I'm going to stick with the energy shield for now. I've also got my teleporter and my camo. And these are the passive upgrades. So I've gone with an axe sharpener because I like going in for a few axe hits. I can switch that out for the lumberjack so I can craft quicker. Or the scavenger axe, which means uh, if I kill someone, I can recover a bit of health. I believe is how that works. So I'm going to go with the axe sharpener. A bit, uh, bit more resources to craft the axe sharpener, but it is a quite a nice chunk of damage. And you can uh, upgrade these up to five times. So the cloak. Uh, the standard cloak just gives you cold resistance, so I've gone with the runner cloak, which is a little bit less cold resistance, however, it's going to give you some stamina as well, so it's good, also good in combat, so you can uh, keep running people down. So that just shows off a few, uh, kind of how the crafting customization works. So before the game, and kind of in the game lobby, you can switch these out, 
whatever you like. So do feel free to switch them out and try different play styles. But it just gives you a few options and just shows it off. So I'm going to have a brief cut and we're going to jump into our game. Okay, and it's game on. So as with every game I've played, I'm pretty sure this is just standard. I think it's probably part of the design of the game. You're going to start near a couple of trees just to get yourself a bit of wood. So your two main crafting resources are wood and leather. They're what you are going to be running around collecting initially and throughout the game just so you can craft your gear. So while we're just sort of starting off, got a bit of time to explain some mechanics. So your main kind of UI hub, I'd say, is the bottom left corner. So that circle has most of the information you're going to need. So in the middle, you've got the hexes. They make up the map. So you can see I'm in moving around the hex in the top right. So those are the map hexes. And as the game goes on, as with all kind of battle royale games, the map will get smaller and smaller. In this case, it will close off one hex at a time until there's only one left. And then that will shrink down. So that keeps the game flowing as the kind of player number reduces. Uh, around that, you've got the different bars. So in the top, in the bottom uh, right, I would tell you that white bar that's moving quickly is the stamina bar. In the top right, that kind of blue bar is the cold bar that moves down more quickly, more slowly, I should say. And we're going to need to manage that. And then the bar on the left hand side that's taking up that half of the circle is the health bar that's split up into segments. Uh, around that, you've got the four icons. The 10 in the top left is the player count. Uh, you've got the number of kills in the top right. The bottom right is the number of arrows I've got. You can see I just crafted an arrow, I've now got two. And in the bottom left is my armor, which I don't have yet. If I had armor, that would show up there. So that's my UI. If you hold down Q, you can bring up your crafting wheel, which I showed you a bit earlier on. And that will allow you to craft your gear if you have the necessary resources. So I've got a couple of arrows. I've got myself a cloak. And I'm just going to be cutting trees down. As you see me going through cutting trees down, they become stumps. They're not just kind of aesthetic to show that a tree has been cut down. Uh, they are actually important to the game because, as you will see in a moment, uh, you can see a red one over there. I'm about to go back into that area. As you cut down trees, as you craft resources, as you uh, manufacture stuff in the world and harvest the world around you, you're going to leave behind these clues. You can see someone here has had an armchair, which they have harvested, and that is going to allow me, if I go up to it and harness that, I can track that. Is a cut down tree, I can do the same. I can then track these players. So as you go through and uh, harvest the resources of the world and craft new stuff, uh, you will be able to be tracked by those. You've got to be careful about where you do that. This little toolbox, which means someone has crafted something here. So that's going to give away the position to me, so hopefully I can use the arrows I've made to get a bit of range damage in, maybe get the drop on this guy. So as part of the mechanic, as I was talking about, as you were tracking kind of your enemies, you're going to think about if you're going to harvest resources, you need to think about whether or not uh, it's going to be safe to do so. If someone's nearby, they might be able to track you. Just missed the arrow shot. Uh, looks like I got a bit of a drop, unfortunately, missed a chance, and actually got taken, uh, took a bit of damage there. So unfortunately, that didn't work out too well. It probably wasn't a great idea trying to go in this early with only a few arrows. I was hoping for kind of an early kill, but it seems to have backfired slightly. However, I have got enough distance uh, that I can avoid that. That was an appalling shot. So I'm out of arrows, so I think maybe I'm going to back out now and uh, maybe just keep an eye on them, see where they're going, and then just head in the opposite direction. I have to find a couple more clues for me to follow. So it looks like they're not in any. Particularly the high looks like they're backing off slightly, so I can probably just run away here, which would be the wiser option. So three minutes in, we're going to run off a bit and see if we can get ourselves a few more resources, because we're still quite bare bones in terms of what we have. We've only got uh, ourselves a cloak, and I think we made some running shoes, so we need to get, uh, kind of gear up a bit more. That's going to help us out. As you can see, stamina bar goes up and down quite quickly. That cold bar is looking a bit low, which is another thing you need to keep track of. So as you might understand, we are in a snowy environment. As you can see, the frost uh, kind of effect appearing on the screen. My cold has dropped too low. So if that drops to uh, kind of the zero, if you run out of cold kind of resistance or you run out of your cold meter, you're going to start taking damage. So you're going to start taking health damage. So you're going to need to warm yourself up. Uh, the most common way to do that is by crafting a fire. So you just need one piece of wood to do that. Uh, there are a few other ways. A few items you can get, like the uh, coffee, which is the number six slot. If you can get yourself a coffee, you can use that to warm yourself up on the go and not leave any trail behind. Uh, similarly, with harvesting resources, if you craft a fire, that's going to leave a big fire and a big plume of smoke that people can see. So you've got to be careful about where you set your fire and how long you think you're going to be hanging around for. So you've got to think about where you're going to craft your fire to minimise your chance of getting uh, someone getting the drop on you. So we're going to craft ourselves a fire, and while I'm by a fire, I might as well craft some stuff around it. So leaving that toolbox by a fire and a cut tree isn't going to be a problem. So think about it. if you're going to hunker down and make a fire, you might as well craft some stuff while you're next to it. So that's going to bring the cold meter back up, so I can then move on. So that's going to drop down later in the game, and I'll probably need to get myself a warming item or craft another fire at some point else. So I've now got a bear trap in my number one spot, and I've got a glider in my number three spot. I've got a couple of gliders, actually. So those are the items I selected. So you've got the three items in the middle, which are the R, F, and the G I talked about earlier, are the electronic items. So they're a bit more high-tech, so you're going to need to get yourself an electronic, which are a bit harder to get to craft those. And the four, five, and six, uh, six slots, you can't craft those with wood or leather. You're going to have to try and find those in chests or by stealing them off other players. 
So you see these red flashes that just appeared a second ago. You can see them there again on the screen. Those are sounds. So you can see these two guys duking it out. So I didn't have direct line of sight, but I can follow those and I can uh, follow the sound that they're creating. So they're going to flash up whenever they hear something. So if someone's cutting down a tree, if they're fighting it, that's going to generate some noise. So I wouldn't otherwise have known that these guys are here, but this guy's giving it away. Looks like someone uh, won this particular fight. I was hoping maybe I can sneak up on them. GG indeed. Uh, looks like he's looted him. So I probably want to be careful about this fight, so I nearly, I took a bit of damage earlier. I haven't got too much gear, I've only got my basic axe, and I only think one or two arrows at this point. And it looks like that guy's going to have looted that other player, so he's going to have all his stuff. Another little clear loop on his footprints and the blood trails, you can follow those as well. So if you're taking some damage, if you don't heal fully, you are going to be uh, dripping blood. So it's quite nice that they've put so many little mechanics in about tracking other players. You've got lots of options for the kind of cautious, stealthy, and kind of... Uh, Player who like to consider their options a bit more than just uh, running straight in and smashing people up. Or you can do that as well if you're feeling a bit ballsy. You want to go for an early kill, you can just charge straight at people. But if you want to play a bit considerate, you have a few different ways of tracking your enemies. Uh, so now uh, another zone is closing. So we have one zone in the bottom left you can see is red on the map. This zone is going to close in about 50 seconds. So I do not want to be hanging around here as that zone closes. So when a zone closes, if you're still caught within it, once it's closed, you're going to start taking very quickly a lot of cold damage. And I'm already about half health. On my cold meter. This is the guy from earlier, actually. Maybe I can uh, get some revenge. And they haven't seen me. It's got a hit, that broke their armor, so they had some armor which they crafted with some gear. Uh, so they uh, were able to use that. That was a clash. So if you swing two axes at the same time, you're going to form a clash. I managed to get a hit in there. And now I'm going to back out. I've got 20 seconds to get out of the zone. Hopefully, I've done enough damage to them there uh, that they're going to have to heal up, maybe slow them down a bit too much, and they might die to the cold, is what I'm hoping. I've got my gliders, I'm going to have to pop them in a sec. So if I stay in the zone too long, I'm going to start taking very rapid cold damage. And I do not want to be cut, stored in the cold zone because you're going to take uh, health damage very quickly. I've only got a few seconds till this pops, so let's maybe pop the glider. There someone goes, that's another glider there. Maybe that was them. They're dropping down, they're going to run it. This is going to be close. And I've just hit my cold. So I'm going to start taking that damage. Jump and hit. Just managed to do enough, that's a revenge from earlier, and I got myself a heal for taking out another player. And I get to loot this guy. Hopefully they've got some uh, wood on them, and they do, so I can quickly craft myself a fire, because I'm still out of cold. Let's quickly warm myself up. And I can use the resources I've got, uh, took there to create a few new pieces of gear. Let's make a few more arrows. I uh, already looted them. That's the best I've ever done, and I'm very glad I caught that on camera for this video. So as again, as I'm by a fire, might as well use that to uh, craft any items I want. I'm on the edge of the zone now as well. So I'm back up. Got myself a health kit so I can get that uh, big chunk of health I lost back to that cold. And I'm now going to head, I think, towards this electronic. Another zone for the electronic there. It doesn't look like anyone's around it. I had that tracker a minute ago in that building. So I'll probably get away with taking this electronic. You'll see in a minute how long it actually takes to pick it up. Uh, we've got a few more resources so I can craft uh, a little bit more. The axe sharpener is one of my items, so I can do a bit more axe damage. Because the, kind of the last part of the game just ends up being a straight up slugfest. Let's hide behind here. You see, it's not exactly subtle, I'd say. I'm not exactly sure how long that is. I'd say it's roughly maybe 8 to 10 seconds long. Got myself an electronic, and hopefully, try and, try and craft it quickly. It's going to take a few seconds. Let's go for the. I feel like the energy shield is quite consistent. But the camera is a bit more interesting, and it looks like someone is on the case as well. So managed to break his armor, got that hit in, and the clash to the two things. Oh, we've got a good hit on there. I'm going to try and actually drop the bear trap quite quickly. If he runs around into me, he might hit him with it, and I did. Got the clash, so the bear trap got in there. This looks like he's using fire arrows. Got another hit, he must be low now. Oh, I caught him in the leg. Achilles heel. That's another heel I got there. It's doing pretty well. I did get the drop on me, but unfortunately uh, he managed to miss that shot. So uh, a bit risky there. Actually, I was a bit, uh, bit careless trying to make that item there. But now I've stripped down all his uh, assets, taken all his arrows. I can finish making my camo, so hopefully I can use that to uh, help myself out in the last part of the game. And I can make myself an armor, which is what those two guys had as well. Completing the gates, a single type of hit, either from an arrow or from an axe. It's quite a useful piece of gear. Just gets you, uh, you can take that extra hit. So useful to have around. Now let's start moving just to get out of this uh, safe zone. I 
Yeah, it looks like a lot of electronics going down. That's quite a nice effect, actually. The kind of sky light coming in there. That's another electronic. I might go for this one. Depends where the other players are. I might just try and camp it. Maybe set a bear trap on it, and then maybe try and catch one of the last players off guard. Because electronics are really nice to have because you can. The only way you can get the uh, really kind of high end gear. Uh, looks like there's a clue here. Oh my god, he's right there. I was not expecting that, so he had some armor. Nice to break that. That's two hits. Got a third. Never normally do this well. One more should do it. That'll do. Got another heal. But I didn't really need it in that case. That axe sharp nobody really helped out because I've got about a uh, kind of few stacks on that. Got three stacks in the axe sharp, so I still a bunch of extra damage every time I get a hit, so I'm quite good in melee. Still got the armor, you can see the uh, icon is in the yellow, so I'm doing pretty well, only one player left. That's going to be good, might as well just start a fire here. First thing, I've got the coal I need to get rid of, and all these resources I've harvested, they're going to be on my trail anyway, so it's probably safe to just set that fire. Uh, looks like the uh, symbol there means they've found one of my clues, found one of the things I left behind. So they're probably nearby, and this is the last zone on the map, you can see in the circle, the uh, map is the central hex, is the last hex. I pop my cloak. It's a good time to use it. Quite a long cooldown, but it's a good opportunity to see if I can uh, go out and track the player because they're probably around this area. It's done pretty well so far, I think. It's been a good game, even if I do lose. I'm not going to bother getting the electronic. They found another clue for me. So now in sudden death, so the two players left, and that hex in the middle is going to shrink right up to the point of both players being basically adjacent to each other. It's basically going to force each uh, player to duke it out. Mm, yeah, this is very tense. Here's my glider. Might as well. I do like the glider. And there they are. So it looks like it's going to be the final showdown. Let's see if I can set a bear trap here. So I like it when they run around the corner. They don't expect you, if they're that close, to set a bear trap so you can get it off, which could be quite there. So you can get that bear trap off as you saw earlier. It could be quite useful if they just run around the corner straight at you with an axe. Just back off, let them get trapped. Which they were a bit too quick this time. Nice clash. I do like that effect. You can actually knock arrows out in midair by doing the same thing. If you time a swing, if someone shoots an arrow at you, you can actually... Uh, Knock the arrow out of midair, which looks quite cool. Didn't know that before, I actually found that out during the game, broke the armor. Oh, quick shot. And Hunter Arrow's going to track him for a bit, and he's going to tell him how much health they've got left, which isn't too much. Oh, they broke my armor, nice shot. Not sure taking any damage yet, so I'm doing okay. That would have been really cool if I got that hit. So I can track the blood stains as well. Can hear some? Oh, there they are. Let's get that hit and manage to get the last hit. So that is going to make me the winner of that game. And that was quite a good run. I actually had some fun moments, and hopefully I was able to explain everything correctly there. So this time we came out on top. Thank you very much for watching. My name's been Ben from GameReview.com. Anything unclear, please leave any comments down below. Please check out our website. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.